Welcome to Rockford on the Record. I'm your host, Wally Haas. I'm here with Rockford Mayor Tom McNamara. And Mr. Mayor, I've been uh, privileged to be able to attend a lot of city council meetings lately, and there's a lot of great stuff going on. You're funding a lot of great programs. And, you know, let's start with the Excel Center right, that the uh, that Goodwill is going to be running, which is a wonderful opportunity for those who did not get their high school degree to actually get a high school degree. Tell us a little bit about that program and the city's role in there. Absolutely. So uh, we are really fortunate. So Goodwill of Northern Illinois has been working on this for a number of years. They've gotten state legislation passed uh, several years back that allowed this uh, degree to be a legitimate uh, high school degree, not a GED. Uh, we know right now, depending on who you listen to and the estimates, anywhere from 28,000 to 40,000 people within Winnebago County do not have a high school degree. Uh, we know the importance of high school degrees, and I think what makes this really special, there's a lot of great organizations doing good work around getting folks GEDs, but what makes this special uh, is really three com key components. One is Goodwill will be providing a high school diploma, not a GED. Second is that they will have uh, free childcare uh, for anyone who is looking to get that high school degree and is enrolled at uh, Goodwill. Uh, and third, Goodwill uh, already does a tremendous job when it comes to workforce development and placement. And so that service will also be a component of Excel Center. So you'll be able to uh, finish out your high school degree uh, and bring it to completion. Uh, if you have needs uh, with children, as so many do, uh, you'll have that free childcare and then you'll also be able to ha have assistance with job placement. So it's good for the individual, it's good for our businesses, which in turn makes it good for our community. Now, having so many residents that don't have a GED, high school equivalent, has been an issue for, for a decade or more. Yeah. Why will this program move the needle when others have not? So one, I would say the sure size and volume of the program. Uh, and probably for a, a number of other reasons. I mean, number one, we do have great organizations, don't want to take anything away from them and the programs that they're running for GEDs. Uh, but typically you're seeing those programs run graduating classes of, you know, 10 to let's say 50 in a year. Uh, you know, exceptional ones will be closer to 80. Uh, Goodwill's talking about having 150 students year one. Uh, working up to getting 300 students a year. Uh, and I would say also, this to me meets uh, our citizens really where they're at. So many have children uh, and they can't go and get that and take that GED course uh, because they need childcare and childcare is incredibly expensive. This is providing that free childcare. And I would say also, uh, this provides that pipeline of, yes, it is a degree, it's getting it completed, but it's also providing that pipeline directly into job placement. So 150 to 300, that's the size of a small high school. It is, and a huge credit to Goodwill. Uh, they, you'll be able to actually enroll Wally at any point in time. So let's say Wally's in there and you start at the typical you know, fall semester. And let's say in November, I needed to start. I can jump in and start at any time. So it's kind of a rolling uh, enrollment, which I think will be a benefit to it as well. Okay, so you don't have to start in August and end in May nope. and any time. It that... meets folks where they're at. Okay, fantastic. And how much has the city invested in this program? Good question. Uh, so we are investing $600,000 into the construction of the facility, so the capital expenses. Uh, it'll be located up at what many Rockfordians uh, call Northtown uh, in the former Gustafson Furniture Building that has uh, been largely vacant. Um, and it'll be adjacent to wh where Cliff Breakers is that have also seen uh, tremendous new investment. So it'll be located up there and uh, we're investing $600,000. Well, that's a, that's a good building, it's good space, and it's easy access off the bus lines as well. Absolutely. So it'll be convenient for students and for, to take, attend classes there. Absolutely. I, really, I think it's, a, it's yet another layer that the city of Rockford's trying to uh, improve when it comes to education. You can look at the Head Start program that we run or the Rockford Promise program that we've invested in. Now we're investing in the Excel Center. Uh, we just really believe that education is so critical. With 21% of our population having a college degree and comparable communities having 37 and 39%, uh, we need to do a lot more work to improve our educational attainment, which, again, uh, 
higher education, uh, better health outcomes. Higher education, uh, more employability. Higher education, always lower violent crime. Higher education, always more thriving economies. Fantastic. Now, you mentioned violent crime, and so that I'm going to morph over into the Family Peace Center, sure. which is uh, where victims of domestic violence go for refuge, if uh, lack for a better term, for services. Uh, tell us a little bit about the city's investment in the Peace Center and some of the things that have been going on there. Absolutely. So pretty exciting time for the Family Peace Center. If you recall, just about three years ago, we opened the Family Peace Center in a space right downtown across from the Coronado Theater. It has roughly about 12 to 14,000 square feet. Uh, when we opened it, I believe we started with nine or 11 partner organizations. Uh, today, we are up to 34 partner organizations. Three short years later, we've served uh, more than 1,800 uh, survivors and their children. Uh, we are just seeing tremendous success out of that space. And that space, for those who uh, may not be aware, really brings all services for domestic and sexual violence under one roof so that an individual who has experienced uh, uh, domestic or sexual violence and is a survivor can walk through one door, receive services from 34 organizations, have one common intake, uh, while also having trauma-informed child care for their children all free services. Uh, it's been uh, an exceptional uh, resource to our survivors. Uh, it's certainly a crime-fighting strategy and part of the Mayor's Office of Domestic and Community Violence that Jennifer Cacciapaglia does an amazing job running. Uh, and the, probably the most exciting news, Wally, is not only the amazing work that the staff and the amazing courage that survivors have, but City Council just recently approved uh, $1 million towards the purchase of a new space for the Family Peace Center. So we're gonna go from that 12 to 14,000 square feet uh, that we served 1,800 people in the last three years to more than 50,000 square feet at the Hart Interim Rockford Public Library. So that's the interim library uh, that the, uh, our local public library has on Church Street. That uh, will dramatically expand the space, which allows us to bring even more partners. And we have kind of a quote unquote, a waiting list of partners who wanna come in. We just don't have the space right now. So we are very excited to offer, uh, have more partners and more services in the new space. And we're hoping to be in there sometime around June, July, maybe August, because moves always take longer than you. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, I was going to say that you've probably outgrown that space now because of the demand, uh, and which is actually, you know, when we talk about domestic violence and the 45% is a high number, but one of the reasons that number has been increasing is because his victims are more comfortable reporting the crime now because of the Family Peace Center. Yeah, and, you know, certainly we'll never take anything away from the Family Peace Center. I will say two things. One is, uh, when we held all of those community discussions about the Family Peace Center, we said if we're successful, domestic violence uh, cases will rise because people will know that there's resources, will be a community that actually serves survivors, uh, and they'll feel more comfortable uh, coming forward and knowing that they'll have the support to get through what is really a difficult process and the entire system is stacked against them. Uh, so they have advocates and a great system at the Family Peace Center to support them. Uh, and so we're excited for it. Yes. Now, in addition to working with survivors, there is work being done to help, for lack of a better word, the perpetrators, to help them so that they don't commit these crimes going forward. There is programs uh, to help uh, the abusers. Um, that program is not at the Family Peace Center. Uh, there is programs through Winnebago County. I believe it's called the Partner Abuse intervention program, PAPE, I believe is what it's called. Uh, and so there are programs out there. And what we have done through the Mayor's Office of uh, Community and Domestic Violence Prevention is we are really trying to stop that cycle of abuse. It's not necessarily reaching out to those uh, who are actively abusing people. Uh, what we are doing is getting into schools, getting into grade schools, middle schools, uh, high schools, colleges, talking about how do you treat uh, your significant others and truthfully primarily women? I mean, the vast majority of abusers 
are men, uh, and the vast majority of survivors are women. And so we are actively out there, uh, if it's myself, if it's members of Jennifer's team, uh, police officers, other key community leaders getting into these schools to talk to these young men about how to uh, interact, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Um, and so we're trying to hedge it from the earliest side and then we also know, Wally, that if you were a young person who lived in a household where there was uh, domestic or sexual violence, you have a higher likelihood of living that same lifestyle yourself. Yeah. So we're trying to do a lot of trauma intervention and mitigation. And you know, domestic violence calls are probably the, the worst that a police officer can they respond are. to. And there's been extra training that has happened for our officers so that they can better deal with these situations when they arrive. Absolutely. I mean, uh, most people may not realize this, but Wally's 100% correct. Uh, one of the most dangerous calls our police officers go on, bar none, is uh, domestic violence calls. And so, uh, again, through Jennifer's tremendous leadership and her team, uh, they have not only helped train uh, Rockford police officers, they've helped train uh, Rockford firefighters. They've also went over and talked and helped train our telecommunications folks uh, who are really that first line of uh, response from a public safety standpoint over at the 911 center. So, and then even beyond that, Wally, uh, we are actually getting into the hospitals, helping train them. Uh, and hopefully to have uh, some folks embedded into hospitals very soon. That's all good work, well needed work. So let's talk about something fun, okay? okay. All right, Bayer Stadium, yeah. Rockford Peaches. You know, if, if you've seen the movie A League of Their Own or if you've watched the Amazon TV show, you know about Rockford, you know about the peaches, and there's tons of t-shirts out there that have Rockford Peaches. Now the city just made an investment in Bayer Stadium. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is pretty neat. Uh, you have the International Women's Baseball Center uh, team, uh, you have the Rockford Park District, and you have the Friends of Byer, and you have the City of Rockford, all trying to work together in some form or fashion uh, to bring new life uh, to that space. Uh, there's really multiple components. Uh, the components we're not talking about today, just so folks are aware, is the activity center as well as the museum. Uh, but there's also the field itself that is incredibly historic. And so we have chosen to invest uh, $400,000 into the field. Uh, we did this following uh, last year's United States women's baseball team uh, that came here, played an exhibition game, uh, and absolutely loved it. They were blown away, and so a huge thank you to anyone uh, watching and listening who made it out there. They were blown away by the uh, attention and the festivities that revolved around that game, and they want to bring other games here. Uh, but to bring other games here, we need to make some upgrades to that field. So we wanted to get a jump start, make those upgrades, and you're going to see those upgrades starting to take shape and form uh, in the early spring so that we can hopefully bring some new events here to Rockford yet in 2024. Yeah, I drive by there quite often. It's looking very good, and I'm sure it's going to be much better. I can't wait to see some of the uh, games that will be played there and some of the amenities that will go around it. It could be a great thing. Absolutely. So the last thing, you know, for this episode at least, you know, we have, you know, we vary how much we talk about, right? So Auburn Street reconstruction. Okay, that was a little, had a little bit of a hurdle to clear for from council because uh, some aldermen were concerned about why Aub the Auburn reconstruction had jumped ahead in the capital program. Sure. But this is a, a vital project that is needed for a number of reasons. And what, can you touch on some of that and some of the investment that's needed there? Absolutely. So critical project. Uh, anyone who has driven down Auburn Street knows it's critical. The road's in poor condition. If you have driven down there during the winter time, you certainly will see people walking in the street. It's not because they want to walk in the street. It's because their sidewalks are iced over or there are no sidewalks. What you don't see is that there's 400 lead service lines uh, that are going to businesses and residents uh, off Auburn Street. Uh, what you also don't see is underneath that uh, poor conditioned road is a 100 year old water main that has uh, been breaking and uh, each one of those breaks is twenty to sixty thousand dollars. So what the city council did is said we are going to invest more than thirteen million dollars into Auburn Street. And so what this is going to do, number one, from Latham, which is really roughly right at Auburn and Maine, all the way down to Springfield, uh, we are going to uh, reconstruct the road. 
we're going to add a multi-use path, we're going to add new lighting, we're going to replace a 100-year-old water main, we're going to replace at the city's expense 400 lead service lines. And what we will also do uh, that didn't get a lot of attention is the water system is actually going to pay us back the $6 million for the 100-year-old water main. And what we're going to do with that money that we get, that $6 million, each year for six years, we're going to spend $1 million extra into improving our neighborhood streets. So this is a win for Auburn Street that is absolutely needed for the businesses and residents there, for the pedestrians and cyclists who walk and uh, commute around there. Uh, but it's also a win for every Rockfordian because this is going to be touching neighborhoods all across the city of Rockford. So on um, this project, so what's the time frame? When does it start? When is the completion? Yeah, so we are, uh, one of the reasons why we wanted this project moving is we have a chance uh, to begin some of that construction yet this year. I think, truthfully, you're going to see the vast majority of this project totally completed by the end of 2025. That's pretty quick. 2025, that's, that year sounds familiar for some reason. It is familiar. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. So any final thoughts? No, oh, well, no. I'm good. You're good? Okay. Hey, if you're good, I'm good. Hey, thank you very much for watching this episode of Rockford on the Record. Hey, please subscribe to our channel. The last time I checked, we've only had like 107 subscribers. We need more. Please do that. Like our content. We'll give you more of these videos to come. So thank you very much. I'm Loy Haas.